the all the religious the religions that were brought with that i think i think it's a very interesting speculative question it's speculative so we can't really guess because obviously we don't have that reality but one thing i like about it is if Africa had been allowed to go in the trajectory it was supposed to go in, where would it be? To answer that question well, we've got to go back into history. And we have to challenge the question by posing this one. Or challenge the narrative, sorry, by posing this question. Is what you and I learn about the history of Africa true? And so I'm going to, I'm going to go back to you on that one, Renatus. I want a, a feedback from you because... That is the basis on which we can now tackle this question you've asked. Ask yourself this question. Is the history you and I have learned about Africa that is being taught in schools right now as we speak, my brother, is that the true history of Africa? What do you think? Well, I don't think Africa, well, at least now we are trying, but before I don't think Africa took control of its own stories, right? So in a way, it's very hard to say if the stories that we are being taught are true or not. But one could easily create an argument that it's not. And why is that? Well, nobody has ever wanted what's good for Africa except for Africa itself. <laughs> I like that, Renatus. It's true. Look, I'll be very honest with you. Thank God for technology. Thank God for the internet. Because one of the things the internet has done, which for me is a huge plus, it's a double-edged sword. So there's a good side and a bad side, but here's the good side. The good side of the internet is it has allowed never before accessible information to become public domain. So now even stuff that was the preserve of experts and, 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 and leaders in specific fields, I call them gatekeepers, by the way. These experts held on to knowledge which was no, not made available. But now, because of the internet, we have access to this information. I'm gonna give one area, very controversial, very, very controversial, but for me, it hits home. Egyptology, Egyptology. Now, ha there has been so many different civilizations across the world. The Incas, the Aztecs, the Mayans, um, the Far East has got some amazing history and, 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 and narrations, but the most exciting narrations and histories lie in the Middle East. So you're talking about the Mesopotamian Peninsula, where you had uh, Babylon in the past and all those places. You've got Egypt. These are the two most ancient uh, civilizations in the world. The Egyptian Kemet uh, civilization and the Mesopotamian Babylonian uh, civilization. Well, if you want to throw in, you can also bring the Sanskrit, which are the Indian uh, subcontinent, because you had also ancient, ancient uh, uh, history there. Like really ancient, like really going back 3,500 uh, years before Christ, you know, 4,000, 4,500 years before Christ. They have these early, early, early recordings. Now, let's come back to Egypt. Egyptology. What's that? Out of all these, the only, <laughs> the only field which got its own label was Egyptology. And the most powerful archaeologists and anthropologists and experts all descended into Egypt to study everything about Egypt and formed a branch called Egyptology, as we say. And you ask yourself this question, if Egyptology is so powerful and if the knowledge of Egypt is so profound, why haven't we been taught that as part of our African history from our primary and secondary levels of school? Even now here in Zambia, I can tell you, unless they change the syllabus without my knowledge, we don't learn about Egypt. We've never learned about Egypt. The pyramids, that's supposed to be Africa. We've never learned about it. And then you now move to the west of Africa. And then you move to the northern part of Africa, Morocco, Algeria, the Tuaregs, you know, that whole, the Moors. And you start to learn that these people actually took civilization into Europe. So it was the Moors, Africans from 500 AD Wait, from about 400 AD, yes, 400 AD, just, just after 
you know, the church became the church. From that period up to about 700 AD, it was the Moors. They transformed Europe. Europe were basically barbarians. The only ones who were civilized were the Greeks. And what's so interesting is that Greeks pillaged so much information out of Alexandria. Alexandria was the center of learning. They had the most advanced libraries 1,500, no, 500 years before Christ. That was the center of civilization. That was all destroyed during the Roman invasions of the first century AD. Now, again, Renatus, ask yourself, why? Who occupied all those places? What did they look like? Who were they? When the when the, the Islamic Ottoman Empire expansion began around 600 AD, well, you know, under the charge of Muhammad and the Islamic uh, expansion into Europe, you find again, very interestingly, that there is so much Africanness involved. If we also look at the migration of customs and behaviors through the Nile Valley before Christ, you see another very interesting development. You see Middle Eastern, Canaan, Israelite, Abrahamic uh, customs spread into parts of Africa. There are enough scholars right now. The school is growing very big. The number of scholars is large. The body is amazing. And they are now just fighting with gatekeepers. But there, are enough, there is enough evidence now to suggest, Renatus, that many of our ancient African migrations actually came from that part of the world. They came from the Nile Valley, and the so-called uh, Middle East Peninsula. So what am I saying in short, Renatus? There's a, 